Hello friends, my name is Avinash Parkhe from Department of Mechanical Engineering, uh, Severage College of Engineering, Pandarpur. So today we'll discuss about the chapter number two of experimental stress analysis. The name of chapter is Polaroscope. So in the part one of the Polaroscope, we'll discuss about the uh, uh, the basic introduction related to the polaroscopic device then we'll discuss about the what is meant by the plane polaroscope what is meant by the circular polaroscope then we'll discuss about the difference between the plane polaroscope and the circular polaroscope then uh, the different arrangements in the you know, polaroscopic device then we'll discuss about the effect of stressed model in the polaroscopic device okay so one by one we'll cover so before moving to the uh, uh, actual syllabus initially we'll take the basic introduction related to the polaroscopic device so whatever the figure is there in front of you that uh, figure uh, represents the basic construction of the polaroscopic device or actually the figure of the polaroscopic device so initially i will explain the construction and working of the polaroscope that is how this polaroscopic device it's used for the analysis of stresses or how this particular device is used in the concept of photoelasticity so actually uh, in the experimental stress analysis basically there are three methods are there one is the photoelasticity then coating method and third one is a uh, strain gauge techniques so out of this particular three techniques the first technique that is uh, the photoelasticity so in the concept of the photoelasticity so this particular device is used during the analysis so if you go through the figure so that uh, polaroscopic device consists of a uh, some additional important elements one of the most important element which is called as a light source so to the left side of this particular instrument the light source is provided so that light source may be ordinary light source or the monochromatic light source so what is the difference between ordinary and monochromatic so ordinary light it is also called as a white light it's also called as a natural light which is emitted from the tungsten filament bulb or which is emitted from the sun rays the light which is emitted from the sun rays or the ordinary light it is having one property that is it is having the different colors different frequencies and the different wavelength that means if the ordinary light is passes through the photoelastic model whatever the change in physical properties we have observed that change in physical properties or that fringes are having the different colors because the white light or the ordinary light is having the different colors if i will use the monochromatic light it is having one more property that is it is having the single frequency single wavelength and the single color so such types of the light sources are emitted from the high pressure mercury vapor lamp which is having only one color and it is yellowish in color so such types of the monochromatic light sources previously uh, it is uh, used uh, on the roads so it which is having the dark yellowish color if such types of the light sources passes through the photoelastic model then you will get the fringes having the colors black and white so as per our requirement we have to decide that is we have to go for the ordinary light or whether we have to go for the monochromatic light according to that we have to switch on that particular light and we can go for the further experimentation so this particular light source is provided to the light side of that particular uh, left side of that particular instrument then after the light source one more important element is there which is called as a polarizer so uh, this polarizer is acts as a one filtering device which is provided after the light source because what is the requirement in the polaroscope when the number of light rays are passes through the photoelastic model that light should have only one direction or it is having perfectly horizontal direction but what happen when the light is started uh, once the light is started it is having the infinite number of directions means some of the light sources are moving in x some of the light sources are moving in the y direction some of the light sources are moving in the z direction but what is our requirement when the light is passes through the polaroscopic device or if it is passes through the photoelastic model it is in only horizontal direction means it will be behaves like a simple harmonic motion so for that purpose this particular polarizer which is also called as a filtering device is provided after the light source if the light is passes through this particular polarizer so that light that polarizer will convert the or the ordinary light sources into polarizer that means when the light is coming out from the polarizer it is in only 
horizontal direction and it will be behaves in a simple harmonic motion and it will be behaves in a simple harmonic motion so when the light is coming out from the polarizer this light source is called as a polarized light so before the polarizer the light is called as a ordinary light or the monochromatic light when the light is coming out from the polarizer it is called as a polarized light then the light is passes through the quadrio plate one then it is passes through the photoelastic model so in the central portion of the model there is one loading frame or the loading bar is there in which uh, we can apply the load on the photoelastic model that load may be tensile that load may be compressive that load may be bending as per the requirement of the photoelastic model we have to apply the load on the photoelastic model by using this particular loading frame uh, after that uh, loading frame uh, the quarter wave plate 2 is provided and after that the analyzer is provided so the basic function of the analyzer is to observe the fringes which are developed in the photoelastic model actually the function of polarizer and analyzer are same uh, both are made by the same materials but this uh, second polarizer or this particular analyzer is used for the analysis purpose therefore instead of it is called as a polarizer it is called as a analyzer so whatever observations we have to do we have to do that observations from this particular analyzer side or from this particular camera through this particular camera or through this particular analyzer we can observe the how much amount of fringes are developed in that particular photoelastic model so this is about the basic construction of the polariscopic device this device is used for the concept of photoelasticity that is to find out the direction and magnitude of principal stresses in the photoelastic models so that model may have different types of the cross section some of the models are having the rectangular cross section some of the models are having the circular cross section some of the models are having the cross sections like tensile specimen like that so many cross sections are there which are mounted on this particular polaroscopic device and their analysis is carried out in the form of direction of principal stresses and the magnitude of principal stresses so this is the basic introduction related to the polaroscope now how this device is used to find out the direction and to find out the magnitude now we'll see in the next slide now uh, in the polaroscope basically there are two types of the arrangements are are there that is one is the plane polaroscope arrangement and another is the circular polaroscope arrangement because what is our requirement i have to calculate the direction and the magnitude so if i have to calculate the direction of principal stresses then i have to use this arrangement that is the plane polaroscope arrangement and if i have to calculate the magnitude of principal stresses then i have to use the circular polaroscope arrangement uh, that circular polaroscope arrangement we'll see afterwards now we'll see about the plane polaroscope arrangement now once again i will explain the basic construction of the plane polaroscope arrangement and which important elements are used in the plane polaroscope arrangement so if you go through the figure initially again uh, the light source is one of the important element which is provided to the right side then after the light source another important element is there that is polarizer which will be acts as a filtering device then after the polarizer the photoelastic model is there and that photoelastic model is available in the form of circular in cross section or we can consider it as a circular disc which is under the diametrical compression so according to the uh, direction of this particular two arrows this particular disc is under the compression that means compressive load is applied and at the end one more important element is there which is called as a analyzer that means in the plane polaroscope arrangement only four important elements are there that is one is a light source then polarizer then photoelastic model and then analyzer so this particular arrangement is used to find out the direction of the principal stresses then how uh, its direction is calculated so for that purpose the second figure is there so whatever the second figure is there it consists of a one fringe pattern so what happen in the plane polaroscope arrangement if your model is under the diametrical compression uh, the light is started the light is passes through the photoelastic model so due to the load applied on this particular circular disc their physical properties will get changed and that change in physical properties are observed in the form of different types of colors or different types of fringes which are developed at the top of the model then bottom of the model to the right side of the model and to the left side of the model so such types of the fringe pattern is shown by the 
second figure if you go through the second figure so it consists of a different types of fringes so some of the fringes are present at the top side some of the fringes are present at the bottom side in the form of half circle then uh, to the right side and the left side also some of the fringes are present in the form of vertical lines if you go through the all the types of fringes all the fringes are having the different types of colors so why it is having the different types of colors because the ordinary light or uh, the white light is passes through the photoelastic model if the monochromatic light is passes through the model you will get the fringes in the same manner but they are having the only two colors that is black white black white like that fringe pattern will get in the monochromatic light no problem we can use the ordinary light we can use the monochromatic light it depends on you which types of the light source uh, we have to use during the analysis now if you go through the figure uh, the plane photoscope arrangement whatever the fringe pattern is developed it is in front of you so actually in the plane photoscope arrangement there are two types of fringes are developed so one is called as a isoclinic fringes and another is called as a isochromatic fringes but initially what happened we don't know about which is the isoclinic fringe or which is the isochromatic fringe that means whatever the fringes are developed at the top the fringes developed at the bottom then right side and the left side whether they are isoclinic or whatever the fringes are present at the corner side if you go through the second figure so to the corner side of this particular circular disc the four fringes are present which is having the dark green color so uh, that particular fringes whether it is called as a isoclinic fringe or whether it is called as a isochromatic fringe so initially i am also in confusion whatever the two types of fringes are developed out of these two types of fringes which is the isoclinic and which is the isochromatic fringe pattern so for that purpose we have to follow one procedure so what we have to do uh, initially we have to apply the sum amount of load from for example from 0 kN to i have applied the 50 kN load and for the 50 kN this much amount of fringes are developed in the photoelastic model which is shown by the second figure that means the some of the fringes are present at the top and bottom side some of the fringes are present to the right and left side and the four fringes are present to the corner side of this particular photoelastic model which is represented by dark green color so what is my requirement to distinguish between the isoclinic and isochromatics i have to rotate the analyzer may be in clockwise direction and the anti clockwise direction so before that what is the requirement of the plane polariscopic device or the polariscopic device the axis of polarizer and analyzer are always perpendicular to each other if they are perfectly perpendicular to each other then and then we can observe the uh, fringe pattern in good manner if they are not perpendicular to each other then the fringe pattern becomes invisible so both axes are perpendicular to each other so uh, now in order to distinguish between the uh, isoclinic and the isochromatic fringe pattern so i have to rotate the analyzer maybe in clockwise direction and the anti clockwise direction suppose if i will rotate the analyzer in the clockwise direction so due to that rotation what happen whatever the that green dark fringes are present at the corner side so these fringes are start moving towards the point of interest so in case of way that particular circular disc at the center point uh, the it is called as a point of interest that means we have to pass all these particular fringes through the point of interest so what happen if i will rotate the analyzer in uh, clockwise direction out of these four fringes which are present at the four corners so due to the clockwise rotation the two fringes are start moving towards the point of interest in clockwise direction if i will rotate the analyzer in anti clockwise direction so remaining two fringes are start moving towards the point of interest means what happen due to the clockwise rotation due to the anti clockwise rotation only this four corner fringes are moving towards the point of interest that in clockwise uh, rotation the fringe number 1 and fringe number 4 will move in anti clockwise rotation the fringe number 2 and the fringe number 3 will move that means maybe in clockwise rotation maybe in anti clockwise rotation whatever the fringe pattern is present at the four corner sides only that fringes are movable so that fringes are called as a isoclinic fringes and whatever the fringes are present to the top side 
bottom side right side and the left side these fringes are remain stationary in the clockwise or in the anti clockwise rotation of analyzer so that fringes are called as a isochromatic fringes that means in the plane polar scope arrangement whatever the two types of fringes are developed that is isoclinic and isochromatic out of that the isoclinics are movable and the isochromatics are stationary and by using that isoclinic fringes i can calculate the direction of principal stasis so how the direction is calculated suppose once again so apply the sum amount of load on the photoelastic model some of the fringes are developed at the four corner sides which are shown by this particular figure that means at the four corner sides so uh, the green fringes are there uh, so due to the clockwise rotation so what happened the two fringes are start moving towards the point of interest so initially uh, your pointer is exactly at the zero if i will start the rotation of analyzer in clockwise direction so out of these two fringes the two fringes are out of these four fringes the fr two fringes are start moving towards the point of interest and once it is passes through the point of interest we have to stop the rotation and we have to measure the angle that is from zero how much amount of angle is subtended by the analyzer to pass these two fringes through the point of interest so if uh, the angle subtended is the 60 degree so from this particular center point to the 60 degree if i will draw one inclined line that one inclined line represents the direction of first principal stresses that is direction of sigma 1 and for the second direction calculation need not require to rotate the analyzer in anti clockwise direction so whatever the first directions i have calculated for this first direction if we'll, if i will draw the perpendicular line so that second line indicates the direction of second principal stresses that is direction of sigma 2 once that means if i will calculate only one direction for second direction calculation so you have to draw the second line which is perpendicular to the first one and this both direction represents the direction of principal stresses so like that the plane polaroscope arrangement is used to find out the direction of principal stresses which is calculated by using the movable isoclinic fringes now once the direction is calculated now we have to go for the further parameter that is we have to go for the calculation of magnitude of principal stresses that means we have to calculate the value of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 or we have to calculate the value of sigma 1 separately or calculate the value of sigma 2 separately now the circular polaroscope arrangement so already we have discussed that is related to the plane polaroscope which is used to find out the direction now i have to calculate the magnitude of principal stresses so if i have to calculate the magnitude of principal stresses i have to use the circular polaroscope arrangement the basic construction of the plane polaroscope and the circular polaroscope is same but in the circular polaroscope arrange, arrangement additional two elements are provided which is called as a quarter wave plate number one and the quarter wave plate number two so if you go through the construction to the left side of that particular figure once again the light source is provided after the light source polarizer is there so after the polarizer the quarter wave plate number one is provided after the polarizer and before the photoelastic model then photoelastic model is already there which is under the loading condition then after the photoelastic model the quarter wave plate number two is provided and after that the analyzer is provided for the observation purpose if you go through the axis of polarizer and axis of analyzer the axis of polarizer is vertical axis of analyzer is horizontal that means both axes are perpendicular to each other so as, as already we have discussed that is the quarter wave plate number one and two is provided that is quarter wave plate number one is provided before the photoelastic model and the quarter wave plate number two is provided after the photoelastic model actually this particular quarter wave plates are provided for the three basic reasons because uh, whatever the directions we have calculated that directions we have calculated by using the isoclinic fringe that means in the plane polaroscope arrangement there is no use of isochromatic fringe because the isochromatic fringe is stationary but in circular polaroscope arrangement whatever the magnitude we have to calculate for that magnitude calculations we have to remove the isoclinic fringes and we have to obtain only isochromatic fringes so this particular quarter wave plate number one and the quarter wave plate number two it is having the 
three basic functions that is first function is to remove the isoclinic fringe so in the circular polaroscope arrangement there is no use of isoclinic fringe and that isoclinic fringes are removed by using the quarter wave plate number one and the quarter wave plate number two then second obtain only the isochromatic fringes so whatever the fringe pattern is obtained in the circular polaroscope arrangement which is shown by the second figure in that only isochromatic fringes are present at the top side bottom side right side and the left side of the photoelastic model there is no any isoclinic fringe present at the corner point of the photoelastic model why that fringes are not present because the quarter wave plate number one and the quarter wave plate number two is provided before the model and the after the photoelastic model and the third function of the quarter wave plate one and quarter wave plate two that is to convert the plane polarized light into circular polarized light so in the plane polaroscope arrangement whatever the light sources we have used that light source is called as a plane polarized light because the arrangement is called as a plane polaroscope arrangement now in the circular polaroscope arrangement whatever the light source i have to use that light source is called as a circular polarized light because the uh, the arrangement is the circular polaroscope arrangement and this conversion of the light is obtained by using the quarter wave plate number one and the quarter wave plate number two so these are the three basic functions what is the first function to remove the isoclinic fringes to obtain the only isochromatic fringes and to convert the plane polarized light into circular polarized light so this is the basic construction of the circular polaroscope arrangement now by using this particular arrangement i have to calculate the magnitude of principal stresses but actually we are not calculating the magnitude of principal stresses directly but to calculate that particular magnitude whatever the parameter is required that parameter we are calculating by using the circular polaroscope arrangement therefore the statement is made like that the circular polaroscope arrangement is used to find out the magnitude of principal stresses so as we know that one uh, formula is there in the experimental stress analysis that formula which is derived by using the stress optic law what is that particular formula sigma 1 minus Minus sigma 2 is equal to n into f sigma by h so whatever that capital n is there that n is called as a fringe order f sigma is called as a material fringe value of that particular photoelastic model and that small h represents the thickness of model so by using this particular circular polaroscope arrangement we are calculating that particular capital n value which plays very very important role in the calculation of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 so that n represents the exact fringe number or exact fringe order which is passes through the point of interest so what happen so in the circular polaroscope arrangement if i will rotate the analyzer in clockwise direction or in anti clockwise direction whatever the fringes are present at the top and bottom side the fringes are present to the right and left side these fringes are passes through the point of interest and that fringe number i have to consider as a capital n and that capital n is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 i have to put in that particular sigma 1 minus sigma 2 equation through which i can directly calculate the magnitude of principal stresses that means uh, the value of n is increases if the load applied on the photoelastic model is increases and the value of n is decreases that means number of fringes are decreases if the load applied on that particular photoelastic model is decreases similarly if the value of n is increases that means if the number of fringes are increases the sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is also increases if the number of fringes in the photoelastic models are decreases at the same time the value of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is also decreases means sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is directly proportional to the exact fringe order n and that n we have to calculate by using this particular circular polaroscope arrangement which is very important for the calculation of magnitude of principal stresses therefore the statement is made like that that is circular polaroscope arrangement is used to find out the magnitude of principal stresses and what about the remaining two values that is f sigma that f sigma value is one of the standard value of that particular photoelastic model which is directly available in the given data the h is also represents the thickness of that particular model which is also even given parameter 
only I have to calculate the n by using the circular polar scope arrangement and then directly I can calculate the sigma 1 minus sigma 2 that is directly I can calculate the magnitude of principal stresses. So if you go through the second figure in the second figure only the isochromatic fringes are present which are present at the top side bottom side in the form of half circle then some of the fringes are present at the right side and the left side in the form of vertical line but there is no any fringe pattern present at the four corner sides that is there is no any isoclinic fringes present at the four corner sides means we have removed that isoclinic fringes by using the quarter wave plate number one and the quarter wave plate number two so now whatever the fringe pattern is there in front of you that fringe pattern is called as a isochromatic fringe pattern which is developed in the circular polaroscope arrangement so this is about the circular polaroscope arrangement that is how this arrangement is used to find out the calculation of n that is fringe order and by using that particular n how the magnitude of principal stresses is calculated or how that sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is calculated so this is about the circular polaroscope arrangement now we'll see the basic difference between the plane polaroscope and the circular polaroscope arrangement so uh, the first difference in the plane polaroscope and the circular polaroscope arrangement related to the number of elements used in the arrangement. So in the plane polaroscope arrangement only three optical elements are there that is first one is a polarizer or first one is a light source second one is a polarizer and third one is a analyzer so in the plane polaroscope arrangement only three optical elements are there the photoelastic model is common for both the arrangements so we will not consider that only important elements will consider similarly in the circular polaroscope arrangement in addition to the plane polaroscope arrangement the two additional elements are provided in the circular polaroscope arrangement that is first one is a quarter wave plate number one and a quarter wave plate number two means in the circular polaroscope arrangement total five optical elements are there that is first one is a light source then polarizer then quarter wave plate number one then quarter wave plate number two and last fifth one is a analyzer then second difference in plane polaroscope arrangement we'll get the two types of fringes that is isoclinic and the isochromatic fringes but in circular polaroscope arrangement we'll get only one types of fringe pattern which is called as a isochromatic fringes so third difference is in plane polaroscope arrangement the isoclinics are movable through which we can calculate the direction of principal stresses and in plane polaroscope arrangement the isochromatic fringes are stationary but in the circular polaroscope arrangement as we will get only one fringe pattern that is isochromatic fringe pattern which are movable and by using that movable isochromatic fringes i can calculate the magnitude of principal stresses so fourth difference is the plane polaroscope arrangement is used for the calculation of direction of principal stresses and the circular polaroscope arrangement is used to find out the magnitude of principal stresses means initially we will calculate the capital n that is fringe order and that n will put in the sigma 1 minus sigma 2 equation means directly we can calculate the magnitude of principal stresses now the fifth difference is related to the conversion of light so in the plane polaroscope arrangement uh, the plane polarizer light is used with the circular polaroscope arrangement the circular polarized, polarized light is used means uh, in plane polaroscope arrangement the ordinary light is converted into the plane polarized light by using the polarizer in circular polaroscope the ordinary light is converted into the plane polarized light by using the polarizer and then that plane polarized light is converted into the circular polarized light by using the quarter wave plate number one and then that circular polarized light is again converted into the plane polarized light by using the quarter wave plate number 2. That means in between quarter wave plate number 1 and the quarter wave plate number 2, whatever the light sources are present, that light sources are called as a circular polarized light in circular polaroscope arrangement and in case of a plane polaroscope whatever the light sources are present in between polarizer and analyzer because there is no any quarter wave plate one in quarter wave plate two in plane polaroscope arrangement so the light sources present in between polarizer and analyzer are called as a plane polarized light so this is about the 
बेसिक डिफरेंस बिटवीन द प्लेन पोजारोस्कोप अरेंजमेंट एंड द सर्क्युलर पोजारोस्कोप अरेंजमेंट नाउ वील डिस्कस अबाउट द वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट डेरिवेशन रिलेटेड टू द इफेक्ट ऑफ स्ट्रेसड मॉडल इन द प्लेन पोजारोस्कोप सो वॉट एपन इन द प्लेन पोजारोस्कोप अरेंजमेंट ऑलरेडी वी हैव डिस्कस दैट इज ओनली द थ्री ऑप्टिकल एलिमेंट्स आर देर दैट इज वन इज द लाइट सोर्स अनादर वन इज द a uh, polarizer analyzer then the photoelastic model is also there when the light is emitted from the light source then that light sources are passes through the polarizer then same light sources are passes through the photoelastic model same light sources are passes through the analyzer that light sources are coming out from the analyzer that means the single light source or number of light sources are passes through the different types of models but as it is passes through the different types of models different types of the elements their amplitude will not remain constant their amplitude will not remain constant means if the light is emitted from the light source if it is passes through the polarizer amplitude is different if the same light is coming out from the polarizer again amplitude is different if the light sources are passes through the photoelastic model again amplitude is different if the same light sources are coming out from the model again amplitude is different if the light sources are enters into the analyzer again amplitude is different that means whatever the number of elements are present in the plane polaroscope arrangement according to that elements the amplitude will get change and that amplitudes i have to calculate in the plane polaroscope arrangement that means the effect of stressed model in the plain polaroscope so if you go through the figure once again whatever the arrangement is there in front of you that arrangement is called as a plain polaroscope arrangement that means to the left side uh, the light source is present after the light source that p represents the polarizer which is having the vertical axis then after the polarizer the photoelastic model is there which is under the compression then after the model the analyzer is there which is having the horizontal direction means axis of polarizer and the axis of analyzer are exactly perpendicular to each other and it is a requirement to obtain the particular fringe pattern now as i have to calculate the amplitude so uh, in the plane polaroscope arrangement i have to calculate the amplitude from a0 to a5 and how this amplitudes are developed initially i will explain that now as we know that when the light is emitted from the light source its amplitude is that is a0 is equal to a into sin omega t which is represented by the equation number 1 so in the figure also uh, when the light is emitted from the light source that vertical arrow that first arrow represents the a0 which is equal to a into sin omega t when the light is passes through the air that light is not inserted into the polarizer so the first amplitude a0 is equal to a into sin omega t then with this amplitude a0 when it is enters into the polarizer again the amplitude will remain same if this light source is coming out from the polarizer again the amplitude is same because the polarizer is acts as a only filtering device so there is no change in amplitude so before the polarizer and the after the polarizer whatever the amplitude of the light source is there it is same that is a0 into a into sin omega t when the light is enters into the photoelastic model with a0 amplitude so that a0 remains vertical as it is but whatever the photoelastic model is there that photoelastic model is a double refractive material what is mean by the double refractive when uh, model is subjected to the loading condition it becomes double refractive means if the single light rays are inserted into the photoelastic model and if that model is in loading condition then the single light rays is divided into the two vectors so that condition is called as a double refractive if the model is in unloading condition so whatever the single light rays are inserted into the model as it is that light rays is coming out from the photoelastic model because the model is not subjected to the loading condition it becomes double refractive when the model is in loading condition so now uh, if you go through the model uh, the model is subjected to the diametrical compression that means uh, the load p is applied so due to that load p uh, the light vector is divided into the two vectors that is one is the a1 another is the a2 the a1 makes the angle theta with vertical axis the a2 makes the 
angle theta with the horizontal axis that means we get the two unknown amplitudes a1 and a2 which is calculated from the a0 that means in the photoelastic model we have to calculate the two amplitudes that is a1 and a2 if the light sources are coming out from the photoelastic model as the working medium is change from photoelastic model to air again the amplitudes will get changed that means from a1 it becomes a3 and from a2 it becomes a4 but if you go through the figure when the light sources are present in the photoelastic model they are concentrated at one point that is at the center point but if the same light sources or same vectors are coming out from the model they are not concentrating at one point why because the working medium will get changed from photoelastic model to air as the working medium will get changed so these light vectors are not concentrating at one point and whatever the distance between a3 and a4 that distance is called as a linear retardation which is represented by the alpha that means from a1 uh, the vector becomes a3 which is shown and from a2 uh, it becomes a4 which is also shown but they are not concentrating at one point that means uh, the a3 will come from the photoelastic model and after few minutes after few seconds the a4 will come from that photo photoelastic model therefore there is a gap in between a3 and a4 now with that particular a3 and a4 value these two light vectors are enters into the last element that is the analyzer so that a3 will mix the angle theta with the vertical axis a4 also makes the angle theta with the horizontal axis and by using that particular a3 and a4 value i can calculate the last magnitude that is a5 which is represented in the horizontal directions so if you go through the figure if any one amplitude is known to you by using that particular known amplitudes i have to calculate the unknown amplitudes means for example in the model the a0 is available with you by using that particular a0 value i can calculate the a1 and a2 so if the light vectors are coming out from the model it becomes a3 and a4 that means the value of a3 is calculated by using the a1 value of a4 is calculated by using the a2 then that a3 and a4 are enters into the analyzer and my requirement is that i have to calculate the value of a5 so to calculate the value of a5 the a3 and a4 are already calculated means the value of a5 is calculated by using the value of a3 and a4 like that we can calculate the magnitude or amplitude a0 to a5 in the plane polaroscope arrangement and as already we have discussed that is equation number when when the light is emitted from the light source it is having amplitude a0 that is a0 is equal to a into sin omega t and that amplitude remain same when the light sources are coming out from the polarizer now that light sources are enters into the photoelastic model with the a0 amplitude so if you go through the uh, detailed derivation so a1 is equal to a0 uh, into sin omega t now uh, a0 already we have calculated that is a into sin omega t then i have to calculate the value of a1 so to calculate that particular a1 value so what i have to do i have to resolve that particular a1 vector towards a0 because this light vector a1 makes angle theta with the a0 at the same time this a2 light vector has also makes the angle theta with the horizontal axis so initially i have to calculate the value of a1 so for the calculation of a1 for the calculation of a1 So for the calculation of a1 if i will resolve this particular right vector so a1 is equal to a0 into cos theta so why it is a0 because we have resolved this particular a1 light vector towards the a0 and angle between a1 and e0 is the theta therefore a1 is equal to a0 into cos theta and then we have to put the value of a0 that is a1 is equal to a into sin omega t into cos theta that means by resolving the a1 light vector towards the a0 i can calculate the 
एम्पलीट्यूड ए वन विच इज द इक्वेशन नंबर टू सिमिलरली आई हैव टू रिजॉल्व दिस पर्टिकुलर ए टू लाइट वेक्टर टूवर्ड्स द हॉरिजेंटल एक्सिस बिकॉज द एंगल बिटवीन ए टू एंड द हॉरिजेंटल एक्सिस इज इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय द थीटा इफ uh i will resolve this particular uh, uh, a zero towards the horizontal axis but in the horizontal axis there is no any amplitude present so for the calculation of a1 i have resolved this particular a1 light vector towards the a0 axis similarly i have to resolve this particular a2 light vector towards the vertical axis or towards the a0 but there is no any angle between the a2 and a0 means it will be considered as a sin theta so if i will resolve this particular a2 light vector towards the a0 axis so my equation becomes a2 is equal to a0 into sin theta once again i have to put the value of a0 that is equation becomes a2 is equal to a into sin omega t into sin theta this is the equation number 3 that means in the photoelastic model i have calculated the value of a1 and a2 by using the a0 value now i have to calculate the value of a3 so what is the light vector a3 generated it is generated by using the a1 light vector so when the light sources are coming out from the photoelastic model it uh, it's uh, amplitude becomes a3 and a4 so value of a3 is calculated by using the a1 that means a3 is equal to a1 is equal to a into sin omega t into cos theta similarly the a4 is also calculated by using the a2 parameter but as the a4 light vector will comes after some amount of retardation so to calculate that a4 parameter along with a2 value we have to consider that retardation also means your equation becomes a4 is equal to a2 plus alpha and if i will put the value of a2 if i will put the value of alpha you will get the one equation in the form of a4 that means when the light vectors are coming out from the photoelastic models then its vector becomes a3 and a4 which are calculated by using the a1 and a3 or means the value of a3 is calculated by using the a1 and the value of a4 is calculated by using the value of a2 then what happens then what happens uh, along with amplitude a3 and a4 this both light vectors are enters into the analyzer that is in the last elements if you go through the figure the a3 and a4 we have calculated by using the a1 and a2 then uh, that a3 and a4 are enters into the last element that is in the analyzer that a3 makes angle theta with the vertical axis a4 makes the angle theta with the horizontal axis and by using this particular a3 and a4 value i have to calculate the light vector a5 now how the a if i is calculated now let us see uh, in the analyzer the a3 and a4 is already calculated but a5 is not calculated so as that a5 is not present in between a3 and a4 we have to take the subtraction if that a5 parameter is present in between a3 and a4 then we have to make the addition now if you go through the figure the a5 is in horizontal direction so due to that horizontal direction it is not in between a3 and a4 so i have to take the subtraction of a4 minus a3 if that a5 becomes vertical so due to that vertical direction afterwards a5 becomes present in between a3 and a4 means we have to take the addition of a4 plus a3 but here the a5 is not present in between a3 and a4 so we have to take the subtraction of that particular two parameter that is a4 minus a3 so if i will take the subtraction so in the subtraction your equation becomes your equation becomes a5 is equal to a4 cos theta minus a3 sin theta so this is the basic equation why a4 cos theta if i will resolve this particular a4 light vector towards the a5 the angle between a4 and a5 is the theta therefore a4 cos theta then why it is minus a4 cos theta minus because a5 is not present in between a3 and a4 therefore subtraction then i have to resolve this particular a3 light vector towards the horizontal axis or towards the a5 but there is no any angle between a3 and a5 
सो आई विल कंसिडर इट एज ए थीटा देर फोर इक्वेशन बिकम्स ए फाइव इज इक्वल टू ए फोर कॉस थीटा माइनस ए थ्री साइन थीटा एंड बाई सॉल्विंग दिस पर्टिकुलर इक्वेशन आई विल गेट द वैल्यू ऑफ ए फाइव एंड दैट ए फाइव वैल्यू बिकम्स ए इंटू साइन टू थीटा इंटू साइन ऑफ अल्फा बाई टू इन ब्रैकेट कॉस ऑफ इन ब्रैकेट ओमेगा टी प्लस अल्फा बाई टू ब्रैकेट कंप्लीट सो बाई यूजिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर ए थ्री एंड ए फोर वैल्यू बाई सॉल्विंग दिस पर्टिकुलर इक्वेशन बाई अप्लाइंग द रोल बाई अप्लाइंग द रूल ऑफ कॉस ए प्लस बी कॉस ए माइनस बी देन ऑल द ट्रिग्नोमेट्रिक रूल्स आई कैन कैलकुलेट द वैल्यू ऑफ ए फाइव बाई यूजिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ ए थ्री एंड ए फोर सो लाइक दैट वी हैव डिराइव द डेरीवेशन फॉर द इफेक्ट ऑफ स्ट्रेस मॉडल इन प्लेन पोदर स्को पैरेजमेंट इन विच वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड टोटल सिक्स एम्पलीट्यूड दैट इज फ्रॉम ए जीरो टू ए फाइव एंड हियर वट एवर द एम्पलीट्यूड्स आर ऑलरेडी कैलकुलेटेड बाई यूजिंग दैट नॉन एम्पलीट्यूड्स वी कैन कैलकुलेट द अन नोन एम्पलीट्यूड्स मीन्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल द वैल्यू ऑफ ए वन एंड ए टू इज कैलकुलेटेड बाई यूजिंग द ए जीरो द वैल्यू ऑफ ए थ्री एंड ए फोर आर कैलकुलेटेड बाई यूजिंग द ए वन एंड ए टू रिस्पेक्टिवली एंड द वैल्यू ऑफ ए फाइव इज कैलकुलेटेड बाई यूजिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ ए थ्री ए फोर वी हैव रिजॉल्व दिस पर्टिकुलर एम्पलीट्यूड टूवर्ड द रिस्पेक्टिव डायरेक्शन वेर वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट एंड बाई यूजिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर बाई अप्लाइंग द सम ऑफ द ट्रिग्नोमेट्रिक रूल्स इन द फॉर्म ऑफ कॉस ए प्लस बी कॉस ए माइनस बी वी हैव डिराइव द डेरीवेशन फॉर द ए फाइव एंड दैट ए फाइव वैल्यू रिप्रेजेंट्स द एम्पलीट्यूड ऑफ लाइट वेक्टर वेन इट इज कमिंग आउट फ्रॉम द analyzer so this is the first derivation related to the effect of stressed model in the plane polariscope arrangement similarly we have to derive the derivation for the circular polariscope arrangement but what happen in the circular polariscope arrangement as the two additional elements are there that is quarter wave plate number 1 and quarter wave plate number 2 so the number of amplitudes are also increases and it becomes a0 to a13 that means in the circular polariscope arrangement we have to calculated the amplitudes from a0 to a13 and that uh, circular polariscope arrangement derivation will see in the part number second of the uh, chapter number 2 that is polariscope so thank you so so what we have covered in the part number 1 so in the part number 1 we have discussed about the basic introduction related to the polariscope uh, that is a uh, basic introduction related to the polariscopic device then we have discussed about the plane polariscope arrangement and how this arrangement is used to find out the direction of principal stresses then we have discussed about the circular polariscope arrangement that is how this arrangement is used to find out the capital n that is fringe order and how uh, the sigma 1 minus sigma 2 or how the magnitude of principal stresses is calculated by using the circular polariscope arrangement then we have discussed about the basic difference between the plane polariscope arrangement and the to circular polariscope arrangement so total five basic differences are there in between them then we have discussed about the last point that is related to the derivation effect of stressed model in plane polariscope arrangement that means if the model is kept in plane polariscope arrangement how the amplitude of the light vectors will get change from a0 to a5 that detailed derivations we have solved in the uh, effect of stressed model in the plain polariscope and we have calculated the amplitude from a0 to a5 thank you